Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, an oil lamp conversion. For well over 20 years I have had these old oil lamps and they've never been lit. They're in different stages of of uh, repair or in poor condition and my initial intention when I got them many years ago was to refurbish them and use them as oil lamps but that kind of went by the wayside and I thought it would be fun if I took one of them and converted it to an electric unit and that's what we're going to do on today's show. Well, out of the three lamps that I have, I've actually chosen this one here to modify. Um, the reason being, I, I just like the shape of the chimney of this thing. And you know what, I don't know, I just kind of like the entire unit as far as its shape goes. And I think it would lend itself well to what I have in mind. So the first thing that I want to do is I need to disassemble this lamp and take apart anything that I can at this point. Well, eventually all of my electrical connections will be down here in the fuel tank. So in order to get access to that, I want to cut a access hole in the bottom. So I've marked a three and a half by three and a half inch square hole and I'm just going to use a multi-tool to cut that out. And now I'm just going to get in with a small file and take off any sharp edges. Well, there's a lot of metal fragments uh, that are corroded inside of here. You can probably see how they're kind of coming out. So I'm just going to get in here with a shot back and clean this up as best I can. And we won't be needing this wick anymore, so we can also get rid of that. There we go. Well, I now want to make an access panel cover here for the bottom of our lamp. So I'm going to measure across here and it's approximately six and a quarter inches across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some quarter inch stock. I'm going to mark out a six and a quarter inch circle and then I'm going to cut it out over at the scroll saw. Well, I have my circle cut and sand it and on one side, I'm going to do a 1 8 inch round over all the way around. And then what I've done is I've drawn crosshairs here and in the center, I'm going to drill a 1 inch diameter through hole and half an inch in from the edge on each one of our crosshairs here. I'm going to be drilling a 3 8 diameter hole that's just a little deeper than 1 16th of an inch deep. And now at each one of our 3 8 diameter holes, we're going to glue in a 3 8 by 1 8 inch rare earth magnet. And we can put that aside and let the glue set up. Well, the next thing I have is this porcelain socket. It's a low profile porcelain socket that I want to mount into the original wick exit port. Um, I think it should fit in there. It'll be fine. But the problem is, is that when it does fit in, all of this stuff here is in the way. So I need to start dissecting this here and try to get the pieces out. I want to keep as much of it uh, visually intact as I can, but it doesn't look like this piece is going to survive. I would still like the wick 
adjustment knob to still be in place, but again, I may lose that, I don't know. So I'm gonna take this stuff out of here and uh, see if we can't make room for that socket. Well, I managed to get this section out by using a dowel underneath and giving it just one good whack and it broke free. Now I just hope that after all of that, I can still get this socket in place uh, once it's all said and done. So what I'm gonna do using the multi-tool is I'm going to cut the top of this dome off so that I can get my socket installed in this original piece. Well, I've cut the top off of it and it looks like our socket will in fact fit into that hole. I may need to make a spacer there or a reducing ring, I'm not sure. I'll figure that out as I go. But the next thing I want to do is, although I have this center section here removed where the uh, wick extension was, this here is going to be in my way. So I'm gonna get the multi-tool in there, cut it out and get rid of it so that it's no longer part of this assembly. And with that piece cut out, we now have full access to get our socket in place. So I'm gonna get up in here with a file again and trim all of those or a file off any of those sharp edges and then we can move on from there. And with a little bit of finagling, we got the socket into our cap and that will just sit just like this, but we want to line up that hole for the wick adjustment, just like that. And I will be using some pop rivets and securing this in place so that it cannot come out. But eventually, this here will slide down over top for our, our chimney or our dome to be there. So for now, we can leave this alone. And I think it's time to um, drill in for our on off switch. Well, what I have here is a 120 volt rated 15 amp toggle switch. And what I'm going to do is I need to drill a half inch diameter hole right into the back of our tank because that's where I want my on off switch. And I will drill that and then get it mounted in place. And there we have our switch mounted for our socket. And that will be hidden in on the back just like that. So I guess at this point, what I want to do is I want to rivet our socket into place here on the top. So I'm basically going to put one on each side, possibly a couple here. This is a split ring, so I may squeeze it together and then put one on each side of the ring in order to hold that securely in place. And then I will most likely um, put one more on the other side to hold it securely and that way our socket won't be going anywhere. And I think we'll put just one more there in the front just to really seal it in. Well, I said I wanted to use the original wick adjustment so that it would still look right. And what I've got here is I took some MDF, I measured the diameter of the shaft of our adjustment here after I cut it off and it's 764. Well, I just made a little plug here with a 764 hole in it. I made two of them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach up inside, I'm gonna glue this through the hole into this plug, and then once that is set up and dried, 
I am going to apply some CA glue and then slide this one in to complete it so that it's sandwiched between the wall where it goes. And it should still be able to turn, it won't have a function, but at least it'll be there aesthetically and it'll look right. And there we have our wick adjustment placed back in there. So there we go. <clears throat> well, I guess the next step in all of this is to get a power cord installed. Well, whenever an appliance gives out in my house, I usually cut the cord off of it because you never know when they're gonna come in handy for a project. And that's where this came from, an old appliance. We will be using the strain relief connectors. I'll show you a little more on them later as to how they connect to your wire. But these little connectors will join our power cable just perfectly to the back of our oil lamp. Um, but in order to get it through, we need a half inch diameter hole. So that's what we'll do next. We'll drill a hole in the back just beside our switch to uh, have access for our power cord. And now that we have our hole for our power cord, I'm going to strip all of this stuff out of here, the switch, the socket, etc. And I'm going to clean the lamp up and I'm going to give it several coats of flat black paint. Well, with several coats of paint dry, it's now time to do the wiring of our lamp. And I'm going to stress that I live in Canada, so this is the way it's done in Canada. I know there are different voltages in different parts of the world, and you will have to adjust for whatever region you live in. But for Canadian standards, that is what I'm going by. So this plug that I cut off the heater is a polarized plug where one blade of the plug is larger than the other. The smaller blade or the thinner blade on the plug denotes the hot side or the black wire, if you will. So we're going to trace this down so that we know which side is the hot. And it will be the one here on my left. It's the one with all the writing on it. So I said earlier that we're going to be using these strain relief connectors. And that would be these little items. I'll just give you a close up of it here so you can see what it looks like. And it's a very simple process to use these. All we need to do is wrap them around our cord just like this. like this, and then the second piece goes around and pinches that cord in there. And once you get it pinched in there, you insert it into the half inch hole that you drilled here in your base. So we're going to do that, and uh, from there we can get on with the wiring. And there we go, that's our cord installed. Now what I'm going to be using for connections on my lamp are crimp on connectors. Now the way that it works is that you always want to feed your power to your switch. So we're just going to take that power cord from our hot side and place it onto one leg of our toggle switch here. You don't want to be breaking or switching the neutral, the return or the white wire, whatever term you want to use. From there, you want to take the other side of your switch using a black wire again. I've made up a little jumper here with a fork, fork connector on either side. You want to take the power from the other side of your switch to your lamp receptacle. 
Now here again, we have another Canadian standard. I can't speak for other parts of the world, but we have two colored screws here. One is brass and one is silver. The brass denotes the hot or the black or the feed. So that will get the wire that we just brought from our switch. So now we have power from the cord to the switch. It goes from the switch to the hot side of our socket for our lamp. And then out of the white side or the silver, I'm trying to keep the terms as simple as I can here. We're going to place another fork connector on the end of our white or our return wire. And we'll crimp that down and that will go on the opposite side of our socket. So we're just going to connect this here to our return side of our socket. And there you go. That, my friends, is the wiring. So I'm going to put this all back together. I just want to point out that in the top retaining ring, the porcelain retaining ring, I have painted this flat black to match everything else that we've done here with the lamp. Um, I used barbecue heat resistant paint on the entire project. Depending on the lamp you use, this can get warm. You don't want it to affect the paint. So I did put heat resistant paint here. So let's get all these components screwed back into place into our lamp and we'll carry on from there. Well, what I've done is I've ordered some of these. And if you don't know what this is, it's an LED flame bulb and they're kind of cool and you'll see in a minute how they work. But I've got the original chimney or glass that's out of this oil lamp. My wife was nice enough to wash it up for me because it was in pretty poor shape, but she got it nice and clean. And we're just going to install this now in our lamp. It's a little difficult and it's a little finicky. Uh, hence why I have the gloves on because you have to manhandle it quite a bit in order to uh, get this light bulb in there. But once you get it in, the results are spectacular. So let's get this light bulb installed and I'll show you where we're at. Okay. So with the light bulb now installed, we'll give this a plug in and I'll just show you what it looks like. This is the best part. Check that out. That's pretty darn awesome. Well, there is one last thing to do. And if you remember, we made ourselves a base. I've glued four rubber feet on the bottom. And the very last thing to do is to seal in all those electrical connections with our magnetic base. And enjoy your lamp. And there you have it. Converting an oil lamp to electric. Guys, this project was a load of fun. It was a lot quicker than when I thought it was going to be. Um, a lot of finagling around with trying to figure out how to remove some of the old things. Uh, you know, like the wick adjustment and that sort of thing. I'm glad that I went with an idea to keep, to keep the wick adjustment in place. Um, or at least the knob for it. It gives it a little more of an authentic look and, you know, it just... It just makes it look better in my opinion. If you don't want that or you can't do it, then don't do it. I think one of the things that really makes this project work for me is that flame light bulb. I really love the way that it gives off that nice orange glow and it has that flicker. And the best part is in this case it's LED so it doesn't burn that much hydro to run it nor does it get hot. So I'm not sure what else to say about this. 
I will caution you guys, please, that if you're not confident in your ability of wiring, maybe get the help of someone who is knowledgeable about it. I am a licensed electrician, so I don't mind playing around with this stuff. It doesn't bother me. Um, and I can only really go by the Canadian standards of what electric, uh, electrical connections should be. I cannot speak, and I can't stress this enough, I can't speak for your area of either the country that you're in or the region. You may not even be in North America. So I cannot tell you how to do the wiring in your area. I can only tell you how it works for the Canadian standard because that's what I'm licensed for. Um, I'm always skeptical when it comes to giving electrical advice online because honestly, uh, it can really cause problems. So if you guys are going to do at the do the wiring for this project, please be advised that do so at your own risk here. Um, be very careful. Get the knowledge of someone that knows the electrical standards in your area. And again, it, it's at your own risk here, guys. Um, I'm confident that this will be just fine for me in my area. And, you know, well, hopefully you'll figure it out for your area as well. Guys, this has been a lot of fun. Um, it was a great way to take an oil lamp that would be normally slated for the trash or a yard sale or to sit around doing nothing other than looking old and turn it into a usable project. There are those that might say, oh my gosh, you took an antique lamp and absolutely destroyed it. Well, what good was it to me anyway at this point in time? It was doing nothing. It has sat in the attic of my shop for many, many years and it's just rotting. So at least this way, I'm able to get some use out of it and enjoy it. And I don't see the point in having something sitting around in your attic unless you're going to be able to enjoy it. So this modification was perfect. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Once again, I'm right here on Tuesday. It's something pretty different. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you're going to try it for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.